Hello guys, my name is Lucas and today I want to talk with you about my biggest mistake when developing this project. And it was a problem I also had when I was working for a company, which of course, it came to haunt me later. I am talking about inheritance, more specifically, not using inheritance. You see, I always try to make things easier, so that you have to code them once and then you just have to change some values. A clear example of this in this project is the enemy class or this NPC class. In the project I worked at for a company, we had lots of different furniture, but we just had one furniture class and this class controlled every furniture. That was the behavior shared by the chairs, the sofa, the tables, the ceiling lamp and everything. So it became really, really messy. Of course, it's very important trying to not be redundant when writing code. Don't write the same thing twice, if you can simplify it. But sometimes we cannot be too conservative, and we have to expand into more subclasses when necessary, especially if we're thinking of making a complex game like an RPG. Let's use an NPC class as an example for today's video. Let's say this NPC has its own class. Let's call it Witch Doctor NPC or something like that. Then the quest and the dialogue for this specific character can be much more dynamic. We could make it change according to many different things, like triggering some switch, pressing a series of buttons, logging in at a specific time, etc. And we don't have to only depend on what our quest struct has for us, which right now is monsters killed, items collected, or NPCs that we have talked to. So I actually prepared a little bit of a diagram here. So right now we have one NPC class and that class is shared by every NPC in our game. So every NPC must be very similar or our NPC class needs to be very complex and very messy to be able to give different behavior to each NPC. So this NPC class could be very simple. For example, just having some dialogues for our character to interact with. Let's say villagers, villagers, uh, maybe animals. They're going to only have this NPC class. So when we click on them, they will just talk back to us and that's it. But let's say we have someone like the witch doctor in our village, which is the NPC we currently have and he has a quest for us, right? So we will make a class called Witch Doctor for this specific character and we want to make it unique because the Witch Doctor will know when we complete his quest but he still has some dialogues to interact with us so the specific behavior of the Witch Doctor will be having a quest for us and rewarding us but our game would have other kinds of NPCs. Let's say we have shopkeepers. So, okay, we can have a very standard shopkeeper. So we could define one here. And we, again, we don't have to make a different class for each shopkeeper. We could have just a class called shopkeeper. And we know this shopkeeper actually inherits, oops, inherits as well from the NPC class. The shopkeeper has dialogues for us, it has uh, animations, whatever you want to have in your NPC class. The shopkeeper will have it too, but it also have the ability to sell us stuff. So let me use another. So it has the method of um, sell, right? And it also has uh, maybe can sell and buy, basically. That's what they do, right? Shopkeepers. So shopkeepers have the ability to sell to us and buy from us. But let's say we have a special shopkeeper that only appears at night. So we will call that shady salesman, shady dealer or something like that. And this is a more specific shopkeeper. It is still an NPC, but it has its own custom behavior, which is only appearing at night. It still can sell to us and buy from us. And let's say we have another one. Uh, let me duplicate this. Let's say we have another one called Blacksmith. It can buy from us, it can sell to us, 
but it also can upgrade our items right and that's how we make different NPCs with very specific behaviors and we don't have to make everything on the NPC class this blacksmith here we could make a specific blacksmith with a quest so we will call it I don't know Frank or something so we make Frank well Frank is a blacksmith so he can upgrade our weapons but at the same time Frank has a quest for us so we have a specific behavior for him but then regular blacksmiths won't give us quest they will still have dialogue because they are still NPCs but they can as well sell to us buy from us upgrade our stuff etc so that's how I'm going to be making the NPC system and the quest system from now on in our project. When we start using more inheritance and giving more specific behaviors to our enemies, NPCs and items, we start having a more rich and diverse game. And I think that was the biggest mistake I did when making this project. If you don't mind, I will be making some small changes to our NPCs and our quest system. So the database will only hold the name and the description for our quests, but the condition for its completion will be dictated by each NPC in our game. And this is the same for weapons, skills, enemies, effects, items, and everything. The more classes we have, the better, as long as we're not redundant with unnecessary things. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys please don't make the same mistake I did, remember inheritance. I really hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something. If you like it, please remember to leave a like. Make sure to let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I want to give special thanks to my patrons in Patreon, and I want to welcome our newest patron, Brandon. Thanks for joining us, Brandon. You're definitely awesome. And well, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all on the next one.